a look at um, different sort of fabric types and fabric qualities from limp to stiff to soft to crisp and uh, how we adjust to them uh, depending on what we draw. Um, so I have a few swatches here. Let me get this out of the way first. And I just want to sort of show you um, a little bit of a trick that you can do um, to test the sort of softness or limpness uh, of your fabric. So I have a few swatches. Let's take a look at them. So these two are both very soft. One's Charmeuse, one is Chiffon. Both silk. Uh, 100%. Um, and they're both very, very limp fabrics, very, very soft, very, very flowing. Um, so I just want to show you, so uh, what we do to sort of test it is we kind of bunch it up, and as you bunch it up, obviously you sort of get these little hills going, and you sort of see how long it can go until it sort of like that falls over. So chiffon doesn't go very far, it's very, very limp, so I can only kind of get a little bit like right there it starts to fall over, um, and that is because of course it's very, very limp, and with um, this charmeuse as well, if we do the same thing, I get a little bit more height out of it. It has a little bit more body, but again, not very much. I can only get it to go about like that high until there we go, it starts to fall over. And as you can see, it's, it's very, very fluttery. It's very, very flowing. Um, both of them very, very fluttery, very, very flowing, very limp. Uh, and very soft. So um, let's contrast that with a very, very stiff fabric here. Here I have um, a, uh, like a, what do I call this? Well, it's a twill. Um, has a little bit of stretch to it, so there's a little bit of elastic in it. Um, but uh, I believe it's cotton, so it's got a, it's like a caverly, caver, uh, sorry, a chino uh, uh, is probably best to describe it with a little bit of stretch in it. And it's very, very stiff. Uh, and again, our twills tend to be a little bit stiffer. So as I do the same test to it, um, as you can see, as I push it up, push it up, push it up, you know, my it, it's still going. <laughs> my swatch isn't even big enough to get it to fall over. So it's very, very stiff, uh, very, very structured. Um, I have another. Uh, this is sort of, sort of a raw silk, uh, plain weave. It's a little bit uh, crinkled. It's a little bit wrinkled, but that's okay. We can still do the test. I'm going to do the test again, sort of help it get past that wrinkles. And again, it's fairly stiff. Here's about the point where it's going to collapse. Um, not quite as stiff as the Chino. Um, but, oh, this looks like it's a little noir. Uh See the pebbly texture uh, of the, can you see? Of the fabric. Um, the pebbly texture is indicative of noil. Uh, um, as you should know, uh, again, noil is typically a wool fabric, but we can, this is a silk version, um, and that little nubbly textures are uh, indicative of that type of fabric. And here I have just a knit. Um, so I want to show something. Knits have a lot of body, and it will go pretty far in the test, not quite as far as that chino. Um, so we're going to go up, up, but you see it has a lot of body, and about there, I know I little helped it a little bit, it's got, it was about to fall. Um, but also, I want to note the difference between these two. So these both get pretty far on the, uh, the push-up test, we get kind of big, uh, nice, uh, round uh, flares or curls from them, but if we take a look at this, it has a, it's very kind of sharp. So if you look at kind of the shapes that it makes, this is a lot sort of sharper, and this has to do with crispness of the fabric. This is a very crisp fabric. Um, it will kind of angle very much, and uh, when we get sort of drapes or pleats, and let me just crinkle it a little bit, we get a little bit sharper angles. So if I kind of crunch it, we get these kind of sharp, very defined angles. But if I do it with a softer fabric like this, crinkle it, it's it's a lot softer and rounder shapes because this is, again, this is a very soft fabric. It has body to it, so it will, you know, stand right up there and give us nice sort of big round flares if we want it. Um, but it's just a lot softer than it. So um, not only do we have to take into consideration sort of the, the stiffness of the fabric, is it stiff uh, or is it limp? or I'm sorry, is it sort of bo will bodied? So does it have that structure to uh, stand up with uh, uh, a lot of 
force? Is it going to give us big drapes? Um, we also have to look at the sort of uh, um, crispness of it. So is it going to give us sharp lines or is it going to give us soft lines? So let's take a look at how we adjust in our drawing for every one of these. Now, um, I'm just going to, as a brief sort of intro, go over, I'm going to go over um, a lot of sort of flared skirts because um, it's a really good garment to sort of see how different things drape. So flared skirts are really simple. They're basically just little arcs of fabric. So if we were to draw like flat for them, they kind of just look like this. And when we put them on, of course, um, these sort of flare out depending on the quality of the fabric. So um, what I want to do is uh, just show you different fabric types in this same skirt construction. So all these skirts that I'm going to draw here, all these little mini flare skirts, um, they have the same construction, same pattern. Nothing is going to change about them except for the fabric that I use. Okay, so um, when we are drawing sort of little flares like this in a flared skirt, I want to sort of uh, uh, decide uh, my shape and sort of rough out my shape. So the hips are tilted like this. So we're going to get a little bit of an angle to the skirt that's going to follow this. So the uh, um, hem uh, is going to follow like that line of the hips because they're kind of kicked up on this side and, and dropped a little bit on this side because of the posture. So um, I want to make sure that I get this sort of general shape kind of angled this way and my hem is going to be slightly angled this way. And the hem, since it's sort of this round flare skirt, it's going to be angled but it's also going to have a little bit of this curve to it. So I'm just going to kind of bring this kind of curve shape out like this. And um, we'll see the um, actual legs push out the skirt as well and see what it does to different uh, uh, fabric types. So I'm going to start with something super limp. So let's let's start with like something like my chiffon which I'm not going to bother to sort of go into the sheerness. I already did a video on how to do sheer, but this is sort of, it's very limp and it's very, very soft. So when we have limp, soft fabrics like this, what's going to happen is we're going to get more folds, more little drapes, um, but they're going to be smaller. So um, I also tend to like to use a lighter weight um, pen to do lighter weight uh, fabrics. I'm not going to do it super uh, lightweight because I want to make or fine weight for the pen because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm going to start here and I'm going to just start with this waist and it, there's not going to be really too much to it. It's going to be sort of uh, normal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out sort of how it's going to fall. Now not only are we going to get smaller and more plentiful drapes, but it's not going to really kick out from the body. Um, fabric like uh, chiffon or really limp fabrics don't have the sort of stiffness and body to give you volume. Um, they sort of hang and hug around uh, the body. So that's what's going to happen here. Um, so I'm going to, you know, maybe do a little bit. And again, I'm going to keep my line kind of delicate and soft and bubbly, just like the chiffon. And I'm going to keep it kind of close to the body. I'm going to ignore the fact that she has hands and uh, I'm going to continue from there. So again, I'm not bringing it away from the body very much. Again, it does not have uh, the fullness to be able to do that. Now at this point, I want to start to sort of figure out the folds in the flares. So like I said, we're going to have quite a few little flares and what I will always want to do when I am Um, making flares is I want to break up the line for each individual flare. So that's what I'm doing here and I'm even doing like maybe like a little bit for the inner parts. We're going to see more of the inner parts on a limper fabric and again we're going to get these a lot of little tiny little floaty flares. Okay so there we are and then from here what I can do is I can start to draw up the flare lines which come from the waist so I can start to sort of bring them up.
I'm gonna be adding a little loop here and there, and I'm just sort of doing it from every end of the little lines that I made to indicate my drapes. You know, this is probably a little heavier line with the pen than I, I usually would do for such a light fabric. But there we have um, a nice little skirt that would be very close to how chiffon or something very, very limp would drape. Um, again, small little drapes, a lot of them, not a whole bunch of body. They're not really changing the silhouette too much. So let's go, I'm gonna switch over now. Or maybe I can just shift up, not to waste too much tracing paper, or shift down. Uh, and let's compare that, actually this will be good because we can compare to maybe something with a little bit more body, maybe something along the lines of the charmeuse. Now the charmeuse is still very limp, but it has a little bit more body to it. So let's start again before, right here. It's gonna be a little bit angled because the hips are angled. And again, we're gonna, I just wanna put in a little bit of this to match just as a guideline so I know what I'm doing. And now I'm gonna start, since this has a little bit more body, I'm gonna be able to bring it away a little bit more. I'm gonna start to emphasize that um, A-line nature that the flare skirts tend to have. So just a little bit. A little bit more, I'm gonna to start to come away from the body there. And I'm going to do slightly bigger flares. I'm gonna keep them really soft and round, because again, the charmeuse is very, very round, very, very soft. It's not crisp at all. So maybe we'll have a little one come in here, and then maybe another one here. It's a little bit big. So maybe I'll cut that short and bring it in a little bit there. Okay, then let's bring those lines up. And there we go, a nice little charmeuse skirt. So we have, again, we have the drapes being a little bit bigger, they're coming out a little bit more, and uh, they're still very, very round. Actually, I probably could have even emphasized the roundness a little bit more, um, but there we have it. We have those very, very soft, round sort of flares. Now let's go to the, keep it soft, I don't wanna to get to crisp yet, but let's say this um, flared skirt was made out of like this sweatshirt fabric. Now remember the sweatshirt fabric's a lot thicker than our charmeuse or our chiffon, um, but it's still soft and round, but it has a lot more body. So now that it has a lot more body, we're gonna get a lot more shape out of this skirt. So again, I'm gonna just sort of start the same here, because it's gonna cut across no matter what. Just sort of like that. Oh, should go, well, that's fine. Um, and we're gonna get it, I'm gonna get a lot more volume out of this. So it's gonna kind of come out, and again, this is thicker fabric, so it's gonna come out and around the body a lot more. And it's gonna kind of stick out a little bit more like this. Not too, too much, because it still has a little bit of limpness. And let's put in that, oops. Guideline, so I know what I'm doing. Boop, boop, boop. But the flares are gonna be a lot bigger, but still very round. And kinda of go like this, and then I'll start to sort of bring them down and around. I'm gonna see more of the sort of uh, round outer parts. And let's do this side. Again, it's gonna come out a lot more than we have been coming out. And let's do one more about around like that. 
Let's put in our little round flares now. And we get something with, again, now a lot more volume coming out on the sides. Um, fewer flares, but much uh, kind of um, with a lot more volume and push to them. Actually, you know what? There's something I didn't like down here. I didn't do enough. I'm going to do that one again. And I want to show you what I did and what I didn't like. Um, I've sort of got a weird setup here. That I have to intertwine my arms around the camera, so it's a little bit odd. But what I really wanted to do, so these folds are a lot bigger, and what I didn't do here is I didn't break up the flares enough, so it's getting very flat. So I wanna just show you that, um, and if, if your flares are looking flat, you might want to try this out yourself. So again, I'm gonna kinda go here like this, give it that nice volume, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, see how these are all kind of very flat and in line? I'm going to accent that a lot more. Uh, and this is going to give a lot more depth to my uh, pleats. I'm sorry, my drapes, flares, whatever you wanna call them. I'll do one little inner part there. Let's do you know, a nice round in here. And let's continue. I can, I'm gonna keep them really round, really kind of soft and round and let me do another in, inward part there. And we'll break this up here. Add in my little doo doo doo. Now that's nicer. That's much better. Um, I'm, yes. So, uh, what I did, so I, I really look at the difference between these two. So, see how much I broke up the flares down here. This goes up and this doesn't start here. I really broke it up and accented the difference. It's, it's, there's a lot more texture and sort of difference in the line. This is a lot more smooth. This is not so great. When your flares are big, you really need to start to um, show this difference. So just, just as an example here, and again, when you have a fuller bodied fabric, your flares are going to be bigger. Um, so, you know, here's the difference between, you know, you know, here's like something that's very flat, blah, 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 a little flare like that. But look how much bigger this one looks. And just because I broke up that depth, this looks bigger. That looks much more dramatic and full. Okay. So here's, um, this is sort of a nice example going from sort of very limp to medium to very full bodied uh, fabric and sort of how the garment changes, how the drapes will change and how we draw them. Now I wanna do a little bit more of, uh, let me try that chino now. And um, the chino is going to behave a lot like the um, the most heavyweight fabric I had here, which was the sweatshirt fabric, but it is also something different. It is some, it's crisp. So it has this sort of, it'll have a lot sharper lines than uh, the sort of softer um, uh, sweatshirt fabric. And not only that, it's gonna come out in the furthest. So it is super, super stiff and you know crisp and has that body to it. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see it really kind of come out quite a bit you know, as much as it really can. Um, uh, especially depending on, you know, how much fabric you have in there. So I'm gonna even exaggerate it a little bit. It's always good to exaggerate what you think the shapes will be. Um, a lot of times, especially as beginner um, drawers and sketchers for fashion, we tend to be too conservative with our shapes. So um, it's always good to try to exaggerate, play around with shape, and again, a little bit of an exaggeration, especially in illustration, it's usually never a bad thing. Now we're gonna have a lot of um, big, we're not gonna have a lot, but we're gonna have fewer big flares. But what they're gonna do, instead of kinda coming, so before I kinda rounded, especially the first one, they kinda had this rounded one, I'm gonna go ahead now and kinda crisp them. See, it's a, it's a sharper line, and that's gonna indicate the stiffness of the fabric. So I'm gonna kinda stiffen it out, and then we'll have maybe another one here, and then it's gonna be, oh, it's a lot fl fat, uh, flatter, not fatter, well, it's fatter too. <laughs> um, 
but crisp and maybe I'll have a little bit come in and then kind of this coming around here like this and I'm going to just make those lines a lot sharper a lot crisper and we'll have this again Oop, kind of messed up there And let's go ahead and put a few more lines in there just to sort of show the drape. So there we have it. I have now, this is showing a fabric that has a lot of body and a lot of crispness. Um, typically, again, with that crisp fabric, we're gonna get a lot of nice volume out of it, not a lot of uh, stiffness. So you get a lot of shape out of the uh, fabric itself. Okay, so that sort of goes over the basic of um, our how it's going to drape, especially sort of in skirt form. But let's look at a couple other garment types and sort of how the differences of fabrics apply to them. So let's do a shirt. And so all these things are going to be fairly loose fitting. So whenever you have something that's a little bit more loose fitting or a little bit more voluminous uh, or voluminous, um, it is going to really accent the drape um, more than a close fitting garment. And that just makes sense because uh, the further away from the body it is, the more the fabric kind of has the freedom to do what it wants. So let's do, oh, I don't know, let's do a, maybe just a basic t-shirt or, or long sleeve t-shirt or something like that just to really show kind of how fabric is going to fall um, and I'm going to start with something like chiffon which is super limp and will drape a lot so up here where it's sort of held by the body we're not going to see too much so let's let's just make it a little v-neck or something uh, coming in around here and I'm gonna ignore her hair and everything else because I just wanna focus on the clothes and everything. Um, up here, it's not gonna do much. It's very limp, so you might sort of see like a little bit of a little bit of wrinkles somewhere. Again, the more limp it is, the more it kind of wants to wrinkle. I'm gonna put a little armhole seam. Uh, here, like anywhere it really is going to, it's gonna have little wrinkles and stuff. And now let's sort of flow. I'm gonna do a little bit of like a, a flared out sleeve again, um, just to sort of show you. Now this arm is going straight down. So for the most part, it's going to just go straight down. But again, something that's really simp, like limp and soft like chiffon, it just loves to sort of wrinkle wherever it can. So I'm gonna kind of bubble up the outline a little bit, not make it too straight. and add in little kind of wrinkles a little bit more make it a little bit soft and here we have the opportunity to drape a little bit because it is slightly flared out because i'm doing a flare sleeve so i'm going to put in sort of small more numerous flares as we know will happen with um you know a uh a fabric like this so i get that kind of very soft look it's wrinkling a lot I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's very similar over here. We have a little bit of a, a, a turnout in the arm, so I'm definitely going to wrinkle that up. Maybe give a little bit of wrinkle here. And then this is gonna kinda of flare out here. But again, I wanna make sure it's going with gravity. Maybe add a little one right there. Okay, so again, um, the more sort of little tiny wrinkles you have, again, they're not going to be super big because it doesn't have a, the body enough to do big wrinkles. Um, and then let's say it's going to be about, um, we'll put it about here, and it's going to kind of follow the shoulders a little bit, but also the hips are kind of angled up like this. So my hem is going to be right here, and again, I might get some wrinkles in it. Um, they might be coming down because let's say this is loose fitting. So it's going to be loose fitting. It's going to kind of come out around the bust and here it's going to fall with gravity and then the hip is kind of sticking out here. So it's going to lump a little bit on the uh, hip and I want to make a lot of sort of small little tiny wrinkles there. 
to sort of show that. And then this is gonna kinda come, and then maybe even we'll have a little bit of drape to it, because it is flowing. I'm gonna come down sort of like that. So that would be our very sort of soft um, shirt. Again, a lot of more uh, like wrinkles and sort of um, body to it. And uh, uh, wherever it can, it's gonna wrinkle. Wherever it can, it's gonna make small, soft drapes. Okay, let's take a look at the same construction shirt, but let's do it in the charmeuse. Maybe I can lift, raise this right up. Again, the neckline is gonna be pretty similar. I'm gonna move this down a little bit, just try to always keep things in frame. It's a little bit difficult. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the same V-neck shape. Come in there to that center front. And now we're gonna have a little bit of a, uh, you know, I'm gonna do the same as construction. So we're gonna have armhole seams. Boop, boop, boop. And it's now at the point where I'm not gonna really see any wrinkles in the shoulders. They're hanging off the shoulders. So again, it's, it's a little rare to see it there unless the fabric is really limp. So I'm gonna eliminate them there. And I'm gonna eliminate um, a lot of the wrinkles in some of the areas. Um, I'm still gonna have maybe a little bit right here. And um, I'm at the point where I might not see very many wrinkles in the arm. I am gonna flare it out. So I'm gonna get that overall shape and again it's going to kind of come out and away from the body a little bit more and this is sort of hanging down straight and I might see a little bit here if it connects with the arm but we're going to see a little bit fewer drapes but they're going to be a little bit bigger kind of like that. Um, let's do the other sleeve. Again, this is kind of kicking out, so I am going to still get a little bit here, but again, I'm going to do these a little bit bigger, a little bit fewer, kind of like so. Oh, and let's do the rest. So again, this is going to kind of come here, and again, it is going to sort of bunch up here. I'm not going to do quite as many and I'm gonna make them be a little bit bigger. Then let's wrap this around there like that. And we might see a little bit of sort of a flare coming. You know, it is loose, so it might hang a little bit from the body, or from the bust. And we might get like a little bit of, you know, curve like that. And then just a little sort of indication there. So again, it's a little bit less, we're still getting it soft, we're getting a little bit more body, it's moving away from the body a little bit more. Um, uh, and we still have those flares, but they're fewer, the lines are a little bit less delicate using them. Um, so this is what, again, Charmeuse would really end up doing in our garments. Now I'm gonna do one more, that's gonna be our sweatshirt fabric. Remember this is very thick and full bodied fabric. So again, what I'm first thing I'm gonna see again is I'm gonna see a lot bigger kind of around the body like this. You see, the thicker fabric is gonna sit farther away from the top of the body. I'm certainly not gonna see any kind of um, wrinkles on the shoulders. Still have those armhole seams. And what I'm gonna do, because it's slightly flared out, but I might not see, especially if the arm is straight out like this, I might not see any flare. I might just see the actual shape of the sleeve, especially since it's just sort of hanging straight down. So I'm just going to not put in any flare whatsoever, okay? Here we still might get a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of a disturbance because this is again, this arm is a little bit bent, but what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be kind of large and soft. And it's not gonna be huge, 
just going to be a little indication that the arm is doing something. Okay? Now let me get back to this. The only place I'm really going to get a wrinkle is here. And again, I'm going to make it soft and I'm going to make the bumps a lot bigger. And this is really, it's just going to get kind of a one loop. And probably that would be a little bit further away from the body as well, but. And let's bring the rest down here. So there's my, uh, now that would be my sweatshirt fabric. Um, a lot of full body, so it's a lot fewer wrinkles. Um, uh, where it is, it's still soft and round where I am putting them, but the actual sort of bumps I put for the wrinkles are a lot bigger. Um, and again, a lot fewer. It's not going to have, you know, little tiny drapes here in the sleeves. We're going to see more of the, you know, cut sleeve pattern than we are anything else. Okay, let's do this shirt one more time, but let's do it in the twill fabric. So this is very stiff. So I'm going to put that in all my lines. I'm going to add a bit of stiffness. Now stiff fabric will tend to sort of, a lot of times, um, I'm not going to say wrinkle more, but it resists the body a bit because it has its own idea of what it should be doing. So I am going to put a few down here in the arms. Now again, stiff fabric coming straight down. I'm not going to see much, but I'm going to see the full flare of the sleeves, however it was cut. And again, since it's stiff, this is not hitting anything. It's not really going to do much here. But this, it might be a little crisper. Those corners might be a little crisper. Here again, now I'm going to still, this is a bump here, so we're going to have something. Now the bumps I'm going to make here are going to be pointed. Again, that's going to help show. And the also the wrinkle line I use is going to be creased. And again, really sharp, sharp, sharp. And again, down here, we're going to have that bump along the hip. And it's, it's really stiff, so it's going to actually sort of come out a lot more from here to here and kind of almost even kind of flare out here. And I'm not going to have a lot of drape coming down from here because it's so stiff. They're just going to be kind of like that. So I might just have one little wrinkle here. And again, a very, very stiff, hard, sharp lines. Um, and that's going to really denote how stiff the fabric is. And this is good to do with jeans too. So I just want to do a sort of soft version pants and a, um, a crisp version pants. And let's do, um, let's say, I don't want to do tight pants, um, but yeah, let's do a uh, more of a sort of a, a wide leg pant, not super wide leg, but kind of wide leg. And let's, I want to do, um, you know, crisp and kind of thick first, so you're like standard denim um, for your jeans. So um, we're going to kind of come around on the waist, it's going to come here, boop, boop, boop. And I'm going to follow the leg down and with jeans. They're very stiff, so when I do, we usually get a bit of wrinkle around the knee and around here. Again, I'm making these very um, angular, very sharp, and I'll make it kind of angular down here too. And we do a little bit of kind of like that. I want to make it a bit sharp. And these guys are going to be sharp too. Sharp lines. 
Um, we'll add our little jean. Maybe I can do half and half. That'd be kind of cool. Show you the difference. Put our button up here. We need our waistband. Our little pockets. It's best if you do sound effects when you do top stitching. Uh, okay, so this would be a very stiff fabric. Um, uh, and you see it's very sharp here. Uh, very sharp angular lines which give that stiff feeling. Now let's make the other half of the pants very soft and flowing. Not like chiffon, but uh, you know, you wouldn't want chiffon. Well, I guess you could have chiffon pants if you wanted to. Um, but let's maybe a little bit more of like the um, sweatshirt fabric so it's soft. It still has body to it, but it's soft. So it's still going to wrinkle in a lot of places. Uh, knees and ankles and things like that, even though it's kind of straight out. Um, so what I'm going to do is bring it out and when it's time, I'm going to wrinkle it, but it's going to be soft lines. Instead of kind of pointing this out, we're going to kind of round it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the outside. Now here it might be right under the knee, a little bit of a softness, softness. And I'm going to softly round these guys, not too sharp, that might be a little sharp, but soft round shapes. Okay? So, and you can hopefully see the sort of difference that just, you know, uh, adjusting your uh, line quality and sort of uh, the, you know, are, is your line quality kind of sharp and harsh and sort of staccato-y and, and, and um, uh, angular. Uh, that's going to be for crisp fabrics. If we get over here, um, as we can see, if I sort of soften my line, I soften the folds, I'm going to get a much more sort of limp, softer fabric feeling. So um, this is important to remember because, um, you know, getting the shapes and the silhouettes that we want depend greatly on what fabrics that we use. Um, so it's a really important to think about the quality of your fabric. Uh, so again, if you want, let's say, a fabric that, or a shirt that is, you know, soft and flowing, you know, let's do a little, like a drapey. Um, a lot of times we have shirring in our shirt. Let's do a very typical sort of shirred shirt. Ignore the fact that that neckline is totally, um, you know, maybe we have, you know, I want it, you know, soft and limp and drapey and lovely and, you know, all that kind of great stuff. And it's going to kind of flow out. And it's going to be a long shirt. And it's going to flow up from here and get all these nice little drapes and, oh my goodness, it's cute. Um, so it's important to remember, you know, if this is your kind of style and your design, this sort of soft and flowing little drapes, um, uh, if that's what you want, you know, on your fabric board, if your fabric says, I want this shirt made out of cotton, well, um, what kind of cotton? Because this is cotton. You're not going to get that shirt out of this fabric. Absolutely not. Um, you're going to get a much different shirt out of that. Um, it's going to look really not very good, to be quite honest, with all that shirring and those gathers. Uh, stiffer, thicker fabric really doesn't like to be shirred, and you get these sort of s s harsh lines. These, uh, you know, you don't get these little soft curls. You want something nice and soft to do that. So, as you see, you gather this up, you get nice little soft, round shapes like that. So again, it's really, really important to consider fabric quality when creating your designs. Some designs simply just cannot be made with certain qualities of fabrics. Actually, most garments are uh, most suitable to a certain type of fabric, or at least certain types of fabric quality. Um, so they're not all interchangeable. I know as, you know, when I was starting out designing, I kind of just you go and you get your swatches, you base it on color, and you don't think about anything else. Um, there could really never be a anything more wrong than that. Um, because of course, we need to consider, um, you know, our fabric quality, how soft it is, how much body it has, how limp it is, how crisp it is, um, to be able to get the, just the shapes and the garments that we want. 
um, fabric is not interchangeable. Um, we really need to utilize, and for every design, there is a fabric that will be best for it, um, um, that will really kind of make or break it. Um, you know, something light and flowy like this would be absolutely gorgeous in a chiffon, um, be absolutely gorgeous in a charmeuse. Um, and there is, you know, uh, it can be a little bit mind-boggling at times, the world of fabrics for us, but um, don't be intimidated by it because it's there to give us the wonderful options uh, that we want, that we like, uh, and that we need as designers to get the sort of feelings and shapes um, and ideas and silhouettes that we want. Um, so really it's there to uh, benefit you, to benefit fashion, to benefit um, the wearers as well. Um, because it'd be very boring if all fabric was interchangeable and we just did it based on color. It really would be. It'd be very, very boring. Um, and fabric would, uh, and fashion would be very, very limited. Um, so know your fabrics, know their quality, um, and uh, you know, understand what they are and, and, and understand how we can represent them with our illustrations. All right, guys, um, that's all for today. I um, hope that was uh, a little bit helpful um, to understand, you know, how we can uh, render fabric quality with our sketches. And I'll see you guys next week 